In my opinion, Boston is an awesome place to live. That doesn't mean it doesn't have its drawbacks, and let me say there are some big drawbacks to living in Boston, which we'll dive more into in this video, but I would argue that the quality of life here is high compared to other parts of the country. The city seems to have a sense of pride among its residents, which can make it a great place to feel connected to others and to be a part of a community. Boston has such a rich history. The city is home to many world-class museums, art galleries, colleges, major sports teams, and cultural institutions. There's always something going on in Boston, no matter what your interests are. If you're moving to Boston, it probably has something to do with the thriving economy. The city is a biotech hub and home to some of the country's top hospitals. There are a ton of universities in the town and a solid presence of tech companies in addition to a wide range of other industries. Thus, there are plenty of job opportunities for people with a wide range of skills and interests, and Boston presents a great place to job hop as desired as you move through your career. Another pro of Boston is its walkability. Boston is pretty compact in size as far as large population metro areas in the US go. All of the biggest tourist attractions the city has to offer sit along the Freedom Trail, and walking this can easily be completed in a morning or afternoon. If you don't wanna walk, you can just hop on the T. The T is the name for Boston's public transit system, and the subway can get you just about anywhere in the city you wanna go, so if something you wanna do is a bit too far of a walk for your liking, Take the T. Thankfully, they did design the stops on the T with the big destinations people need to get to in mind. Keep in mind that just like the highways, the T can get crowded during peak hours. A lot of people hate on the T and that hate is well-deserved. The subway, commuter rail, and buses have had their fair share of problems, especially lately. For example, an Orange Line train actually caught on fire and the entire line was shut down for maintenance for a month. Additionally, there's been an uptick in delays and longer times between rides due to staffing shortages. However, when everything is up and running, the system still has always gotten me where I need to go. It's relatively affordable, I can do work and read my phone while riding on it, and it's definitely better than not having public transportation at all. The current city leadership has said they intend to fix these problems, so hopefully they can raise the bar and improve the quality of the tea in the future. I am skeptical, but always optimistic. If you like to commute via bike, Boston has visibly started to improve their bike lanes. It's not quite up to the level of Cambridge across the river, who in my opinion has fantastic bike lanes, but it is improving. There are bike shares all over the city as well if you don't want to own. Before moving to the next pro of living in Boston, if you're moving to Boston, please subscribe to see more videos like this one. One of my personal favorite aspects of living in Boston is the sports culture. I'm a massive sports fan, and I'm not sure I've seen a better sports town. I've definitely lived in places that loved their one team, but that identity was more with that one team and less about the sport itself. If you weren't already aware, Boston has a team in each major professional American sports league. They have the Red Sox and Bay Baseball, the Celtics in basketball, the Bruins in hockey, the Patriots in football, and the Revolution in soccer. And yes, the Patriots and Revolution do play 30 minutes south in Foxborough, which has a train station from Boston right at the stadium. I don't know if we could say that any one of these teams is more popular in the city than the other. Boston just loves its sports. Additionally, with all the universities in the area, Boston is home to a number of college teams. Most notably, the Beanpot is the annual hockey tournament between Boston University, Boston College, Harvard and Northeastern, which packs rabid fans of all four rival schools into one arena for the entertainment of the public. One thing I've noticed about living in Boston is that even the nice restaurants in the North End have TVs so that sports can be on at all times. Usually these are the types of establishments that I would guess would have you disconnect from outside distractions to enhance the experience, but not in Boston. To me, examples such as this show how the Boston sports culture creates a sense of pride among Bostonians and attending games is a common way for people to connect and enjoy themselves. Boston is also the biggest city in New England and serves as a solid hub to check out all that New England has to offer. The easy weekend or even day trips you can take for Boston differ wildly such as skiing in the mountains or fishing in the Atlantic, but they are all well worth your time. Perhaps the most popular quick trip from Boston is Salem. This could really be done in a day because it's only a 30 minute train ride from Boston's North Station. Salem is known for all things haunted due to its witch trials in the late 1600s when 25 people died as a direct result of being accused of witchcraft. The city was also made even more famous in the movie Hocus Pocus. Pro tip, avoid Salem in October or at least expect ridiculously long lines everywhere if you do choose to go during this month. If you're outdoorsy, Acadia National Park is a five hour drive from Boston and you get views of the main coastline along the way. Or for a shorter drive, you could just head to Western Massachusetts to the Berkshires. If you're into skiing, I've been told, because I'll confess I've never skied, that New England provides the second best skiing in the country behind the Rockies. Stowe, Vermont and North Conway, New Hampshire are two notable ski spots, 
but plenty more exist. If you like beaches, there are lots of great beach options all along the New England coastline. Provincetown, which is on the tip of Cape Cod, is a quick ferry ride away from Boston. If you like your beaches with fancy mansions and swanky shopping, take a short drive down to Newport, Rhode Island. I'm really just scraping the surface of what all you can do in a weekend in New England. Let me know what your favorite destinations are in the comments because I'm curious to learn about what else I'm missing. Now my next positive of living in Boston is purely subjective. It comes down to your personal preference. I should lead off this take by saying that I'm from Texas and grew up with regular triple digit heat and 100% humidity. With this in mind, hear me out when I say the weather in Boston is relatively quite nice and it's perfect if you love the four seasons. Compared to the rest of the United States, the summer months are mild. There are days in fall and spring that feel like heaven to me. And while winter gets cold, the snow isn't as bad as I imagined when I moved here. Due to shifting weather patterns, when it snows now in Boston, it tends to be a lot, like feet. But this type of snowfall happens a few times throughout the winter. And the city is far better equipped than most in the country to deal with this weather. Yes, those days kind of suck. No, Boston doesn't have Hawaii or Los Angeles weather. But on the whole, compared to places where it gets miserably hot, I'll take Boston weather and layer up on the days that it's cold. Of course, like any city, Boston also has its fair share of cons. In my opinion, the biggest con of living in Boston is the cost of housing. I think most Bostonians would agree with this statement as it's usually the first complaint I hear from those living here. Boston's Back Bay is the second most expensive zip code in the country, and the rest of the city isn't far behind. Boston's cost of housing is more than double the national average. The truth is that there is currently a housing shortage in the city, and it looks like rents will continue this trend for a while. Hopefully, your employer is willing to pay you a generous cost of living raise to move to Boston. It would be tough to come here and then job hunt just due to housing prices. Boston also has some unique aspects of renting, such as broker fees, which makes you pay even more money upfront to rent. Housing isn't the only thing that costs more here. Really everything in Boston seems to cost more as the cost of living is almost 50% higher than the national average. Budgeting while living in Boston is definitely a priority. It seems as though it's really tough to open a new bar and restaurant in Boston due to crazy costs. And sadly, I don't see any new local dives added in the near future and existing ones continue to close. Another con of living in Boston is traffic. There's a lot of people living here and only so many roads. And to make matters worse, many streets were designed before cars. So while the winding historic paths can be quite charming, they can also make it difficult for even locals to understand how to get around. Navigating during rush hour is just not fun and why I recommend using other means of transport if you're able. Making traffic worse are all of the mass holes on the road. Boston drivers have a reputation for being aggressive and impatient, and this is a perfectly accurate take based on my experience driving in the city. I joke that traffic lights and signs in Boston are really just a suggestion. People do whatever they want on the roads, and police seem to kind of look the other way or not care. Maybe they don't have time to do anything about traffic violations. Thus, keep your head on a swivel if you plan on owning a car in Boston. Another con that I often hear about living in Boston is that the bars close early. I'm at a point in my life where this doesn't really affect me, but 10 years ago, I certainly would have echoed this sentiment. In addition to what I believe may be a lack of demand, Boston also has strict laws when it comes to the consumption of alcohol, and these attributes negatively impact the Boston nightlife scene. I think they may also be affected by the fact everyone gets worn out from drinking all day while their teams are on the television playing. The sports are the focus of the drinking, in my opinion, not the nightlife. The lack of nightlife is definitely one drawback of Boston if after dark activities are what you're looking for in a city. If you're only looking to go out every now and then, you could make a quarterly weekend trip to New York City and take advantage of their world-class club scene. It's not a perfect solution, but it's an option if that's a must have for you. The final con I've noticed about living in Boston is meeting people once you move to the city. The good news is that I found it very easy to meet other transplants to Boston, but I've noticed the people who are from here tend to stay in their high school friend groups. This could very well just be my experience, but it seems as though it's tough to break into any existing friend group of people from the area. And I say this as someone who's originally from a city, Austin, Texas, that is now filled with transplants. While all of my high school classmates still appear to be friends with their high school friends, they also appear to have branched out and met many new people who have moved to their city. Boston appears to be the opposite. And look, I have no data to back up this claim. It's just an experience. And I'm interested if anyone else's experience has differed. So this concludes my video of some pros and cons of living in Boston in 2023. 
Please let me know in the comments if I missed any pros or any cons. Please like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to see similar videos.